I want to thank this week's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Hello, I'm Odin, and the prop I'm going to build today has been requested many, many, many times. It's the Zero Point Energy Field Manipulator, or Gravity Gun, which is a lot easier to say. This is a big, complicated build, and I plan on explaining it in major parts, even though I may not have built it in that order. And as you can see, I started with a 3D object because I could scale it to the size that I wanted, and I could actually get the dimensions that I needed. For the main body, I made a foam core mock-up first, mostly to be sure I like the size, although it is still really hard to tell with just this part. I copy my paper pattern onto some 3mm Sintra plastic. This is a foamed PVC sheet plastic that is very lightweight and easy to cut. I'm making most of the walls from the thickness of this plastic. This front panel is 6mm thick, and all the walls of the main housing will glue to it. I'm also going to add the front cage and barrel off the other side of this, so this one piece is going to hold the whole gun together. Because this is PVC plastic, I can just use the same glue that is used for sprinkler pipes. And 1, 2, 3 blocks are really useful to keep everything square while the glue sets. I cut bevels, or angles, on the edges of a lot of the panels. I can sand the corners down smooth later. Alright. There are LEDs that I want to add later, so I make a battery door that goes in the bottom. I cut a 175 millimeter circle from some six millimeter plastic on my bandsaw. Actually, I cut a lot of parts in the bandsaw. It's much faster and easier for me. And you pretty much have to use a bandsaw on the six millimeter thick stuff. You can cut it by hand, it just takes a lot longer. That 175 millimeter circle needs to be a ring 15 millimeters wide, and I can't cut the center out with a bandsaw, so I use a hobby knife. <sighs> yeah, this is this is fun. Oh, hey, we're 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 there. It takes a while. I sand the sides to smooth out the corners, and it should help the paint stick. And then I can glue the ring to the front. There we go. Next. I make the acceleration discs and inertial drums. I have no idea what these things are called. But for the center acceleration discs, I need to cut six circles of EVA foam on the bandsaw. <laughs> the plan is to glue these together and then sand the curve into the stack, but it's still not enough layers. It's actually a little undersized. So I add one more layer of floor mat foam, and I use the center hole to align all the pieces as I glue them with contact cement. The rear of the gun will rest on these discs when it's on a table, so I add a layer of white central plastic to bear the weight and not crush the foam. I run a 3 8 inch bolt through the whole stack and chuck it into my drill so I can sand the foam down to the shape that I want. Getting the inside edge was a little tricky, but I get the shape that I need with a couple of minutes of sanding. To make the drums, I started with a cardboard tube, which I'd cut on a bandsaw. Then I wrapped them in a layer of 4 mm HD foam. I stack them full of floor mat foam. These four layers have contact cement and Gorilla Glue to hold them in. And the last couple of layers have holes in the center because there's some cutout detail that you can see. The top layer is 10 millimeter HD foam. This covers everything and hides the cardboard too. But it still gets a layer of two millimeter foam to cover the 10 millimeter edge. Now this also has a small cutout detail. Layering the foam makes a clean looking square indent. I trim the extra 2mm foam and sand the top like I did on the discs. All right. Okay, I'm going to need some pipe. I cover a smaller cardboard tube with some 2mm foam and a 1.5 inch PVC pipe with 4mm foam. You want to scratch up the plastic pipe first to help the contact cement stick. The reason I'm putting the PVC into the cardboard is to have something strong for the rear handle because everyone who picks this up will want to hold it by the handle so it needs to have a good attachment place. And the drums are going to hang off the end of this pipe. So I set my drill press at a 9 degree tilt and drill out a diagonal hole for the pipe to slip into. This is why the drums were solid foam. It seemed like an easy way to attach them. I pull out the center of those holes and the drums can hang on the sides of the pipe. But the hole saw made a hole a little too big for the drums 
So on the discs, I just use my biggest Forstner bit, which is two and one eighth inch. These bits make a heck of a mess. So these rings actually have to fit into the main body a little bit. So I have to cut a piece off in order for that to work. I made a template out of foam core, so I know exactly where to cut on the bandsaw. Perfect. Super glue the discs over the pipe and hang the drums on. I'm gonna paint the parts separately, then glue them all together last. For the grip on the left drum, I use a side handle from an old drill. The handle that comes off the back, I thought I would cut down this old saw handle. That should work just fine. The plastic is ABS, so I can use the same glue that I've been using on the handle and to attach an end cap of six millimeter Sintra. This PVC pipe is what will fit into the pipe that's under the discs. It needs to be solid, but the glue by itself is not solid enough. So I pour in some casting resin to make it really solid. I also use some casting resin to attach the side grip. It's gonna take a minute for the resin to set up, so I've got a chance to tell you about today's sponsor. Raid is one of the most ambitious RPG projects that I have seen. It can only be compared to the biggest PC and console titles. Only, this one is free and you can play it on your phone. With just a quick look, you can see why there are millions of players worldwide. And look at all these champions. You can play any of these in player versus player battles. Now, I wanted to pick a favorite champion, but how can I? Look at all these. I haven't even locked them all yet. That guy's really cool. I think the game looks amazing, and I'm not alone. With nearly 700,000 reviews, Raid has an almost perfect score in the Play Store. This game always has something new to do. You can play for five minutes or for five hours, whenever or wherever. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description and download the game by clicking on my special link. You'll get 50,000 silver and a free Epic Champion on day seven of the New Player Rewards program. Go ahead, download the game, click the link, check it out. After the resin sets, I sand the edges of the cap and lightly drill in a detail with a Forstner bit. I'll add a screw in the center after it's painted. With the major parts finished in the main body, I start looking at what I can use for a barrel. I cut down a shop back extension tube. It's also ABS, so I can glue it. If I only had a vacuum hose, I could clean this up. I cut a hole in the main body and then glue the barrel in place. The front of the barrel has a disc, but it's not a plain disc, of course. It has an outer ring and a raised nozzle that wasn't the size of any pipe and 16 little spoke pieces. The nozzle I made by stacking rings of the right size and the 16 spoke pieces were cut in a crazy contraption of tape and scrap plastic. All the parts, even the discs, are cut from black Sintra plastic. And I was really pleased when everything fit. There are six cage rails that hold the crystals in place. I cut 25 inch long strips of six millimeter Sintra and then heat formed them around a plastic guide that I made. And when the plastic cooled, I could cut the excess off and glue strips of styrene on the outsides. This hides the seam and makes them a little stronger. For the three claws that go on the front, I cut a number of parts in both three millimeter and six millimeter Sintra. I ran out of black, so now I'm moving on to my white. Two of the parts need to be heat formed and bent. So instead of blasting them with a heat gun, I heat them on a strip made for bending plastic and then fold them around some half inch acrylic. I had also scored fold lines to help get a straight corner. The top of the claw is tapered, so I had to do them by hand and the scored lines really helped me here. I traced the pattern on the folded pieces so I could drill out the pivot holes that I need for all the claw parts. And each claw has six main parts with eight holes, and it felt like I was drilling way more than 24 holes at the time. Both folded pieces have notches that are cut into them. The base piece, I cut to have the right profile. The extra plastic keeps the sides in the right place. Only the notch in the top piece needs to be filed and cleaned up, because the bottom one, it's gonna get glued where it goes. While building something, you gotta check to make sure stuff works. Really, I'm, I'm not playing around, honest. The tips of the claws have little pods on them. I bought some headphones from the dollar store. These have almost exactly the right shape. I cut the end down and removed the speaker and glue them onto some plastic washers. I give these a moment to set. While I grind out the end of each claw, so the earphones can fit. Now this isn't a drill bit, so my thumb is not in danger. I glue them in place. 
Each claw has a set of two rails that connect it to the main housing, so I cut six strips of Sintra and glue small strips as spacers at the end and one where the rail needs to pass through that front disc. All right. Which also means I need to cut square holes in the front disc. Yeah, no pressure here, this is just the front. Before I cut, I used a piece of paper to mark the spacing of the nine sets of things that go around the barrel. There's three claws and then six sets of Zen crystals. Not the peace-loving type of Zen, but the anti-gravity with monsters that eat you type. I also heat formed a bracket that will hold the rail to the main housing, and I go ahead and glue those in now. There are still more little pieces to the claws, metal rods that need bending and attach in odd places. And I use little pieces of quarter inch acrylic rod so I can attach the rods to each other. And that neat neon color, it's all gonna get painted over later. I heat form some quarter inch square acrylic rod for bent parts that go on the base of each claw. Working with clear plastic like this always makes me think of Fraggle Rock. All those little parts will need to be sanded and painted before they can be assembled. To make the six Zen crystals, I cut strips of polyethylene shipping foam. Now this stuff is translucent, so it's perfect for the LED strip light. I cut 12 for the sides and six for the tops. The top strip is actually a different size. And a set of six Sintra strips to build everything on. I bought a 16 meter strip of orangey red LEDs, and these I can cut to length. And I cut enough to wrap around the center center of plastic, and I cut a strip to go over the top. Now I need to solder some wires to connect the two strips and stick it to the top edge. Now thankfully, polyethylene is not bothered by contact cement. I still half expect this foam to melt when I'm putting cement on it. I stick the two sides on, gluing the plastic and not the LEDs and then I can stick the top on. And the top ends up being wider than the base, but that's good because the way they need to glue to the barrel. A quick test with my 12 volt battery to show the glow. It's a bit redder than I wanted, but that's gonna work fine. All I gotta do now is make uh, five more of those. All six crystals are made, and I expect them to be hot to the touch. They're not, of course, but they need to look the part. So I brushed black craft paint over the foam in a real haphazard way, leaving some areas untouched and adding extra along the bottom where the light will glow less anyway. The real trick is getting paint mashed into the open cell of that top edge. I want the black marks to look uniform-ish on all the sides. And I really like the way the crystals look when they're all painted. And I made an additional piece. This will go at the far end of the barrel so it can glow. And I made a cover for it that has a bit of plastic on it so it has some extra texture. I made a couple of internal supports that will glue to the inside walls. This will give me more surface area to glue on the tube that's under the acceleration discs. I make sure everything lines up properly. And I made the raised side panel that goes in the main housing. It's made from more Sintra with a little styrene and six LEDs so the panel can glow orange. I check that the LEDs are working and then I can glue it into place and I stuff a little piece of craft foam just inside to protect the translucent plastic from being painted. Last thing I need to do is the gauge that goes on the secondary handle side. I found an object that's gonna be just about right. I'll take one of these plastic napkin rings and cut it down. I cut one in half on the bandsaw, and I cut a piece of polycarbonate sheet for the glass of the gauge. It's actually a clear plastic, there's just white film to protect it. And I cut a piece of Sintra for the back printed a label of the gauge and stuck it in place. To make the needle, I used an aluminum shaft from a pop rivet and hammered it flat. I cut it into a needle shape and then painted it red. I push a nail through a pilot hole that's in the back and super glue the needle on. Before I can glue any of the plastic parts, I have to scratch off the chrome plating on the inside of the napkin ring. Then I can glue the clear cover on and glue the base in. The nail at the back of the gauge will let me stick it into place on one of the drums. I have all the plastic parts painted with a couple of different primers, and the foam I primered with black plastic dip. And then everything is sprayed in various shades of silver. I wanted different silvers to start with because I thought it would help with the weathering. And I start covering everything with a watered down liquid black shoe polish, getting more on some areas than on others. Having all the pieces separate sort of makes this easy, but I have to remember what parts interact with each other and then paint them correctly. I sponge paint a little black to help darker areas, 
and I sponge paint some rust on a lot of pieces. I do a darker brown first and then go over that with a lighter orangish ochre color. When I finish the rust layer, I seal all the parts with a clear flat spray sealer. And then I can start putting the pieces together. Inside, I glue the glowing part for the end of the barrel. Now I regret cutting the wires so short and fight to solder the wires inside the main body. The center base that's inside the crystals glues to the outside of the barrel. And I also drilled holes for the wires. And then I can glue the rails over that. And I glue on the three claw rails and the detail panels that go on the front. One tiny screw will connect on the battery cover and I cushion the battery inside with some foam so it doesn't rattle around. Everything works, so I can glue the rear panel on and then I use a six inch lag bolt to securely attach the handle. It's kind of surprising to me that a wad of tape back here is actually cannon. This is the way it is in the game. It's got a it's got a huge wad of like tape or leather or something back here holding it all together. Okay. Screw the acceleration discs to the main body. The drums are glued in place with contact cement. Just still wet so I can move them a little bit. and I start assembling the claws, which are super glued in some places and have tiny screws so they can still move. So many little parts. I add the two tiny little pipes and the gauge that goes on the back and that all important piece of duct tape that goes over the gauge. It's kind of hard to believe I managed to build this thing in one very long, sleepless week. Most of the materials I used to make this project, I picked up locally. I put a part list and links in the description. To make this guy, I planned, measured, and cut over 300 parts and pieces. They were glued, they were soldered, they were swore at. And I still simplified parts of it, like there's no trigger. I put a power button in it because the gravity gun needs to glow. And I'm really happy I was able to get the claws to be articulated. I've been a Half-Life fan for years. I've enjoyed the games as they've come out, and I really liked Portal. So I'm very happy that I have, say, Rick and Morty's Portal gun. I have the Aperture Science handheld portal device, and now I have the Black Mesa Zero Point Energy Field Manipulator, or Gravity Gun. And as you can see, it doesn't weigh much because I made it from mostly foamed materials because this is how Odin makes. So the two pieces that are left over, robot claw. <laughs> Do not look into the operational end of the device. And thank you again to Raid Shadow Legends for being this week's sponsor. And you can help too. Download the game using my special link in the description of this video. I want to thank Robert M. Davis, KO Makes Things, and all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really do make this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.